behalf of the faculty of the Watts College of Public Service and Community Solutions, it is my great privilege and honor to welcome you, graduates of the fall class of 2018, to the Company of Scholars with all its rights, honors, privileges, and obligations. Congratulations. <laughs> You can, you can sit. I feel like I should be on a pulpit when I do that. So in a moment, you will walk across this stage and enjoy the cheers and applause of family and friends. Yes, exactly, good warm up. It is a time when exuberance is totally appropriate. I don't want to have to remind you again, totally appropriate and richly deserved. I want each and every one of you to bask in it Soak it in, enjoy it. Okay, but truth in advertising, um, you're gonna have to wait in line for a little bit because it takes a little while. So I like to take a few minutes now to give you something really serious to, to think about besides how embarrassing it would be to trip and fall in front of a few thousand people. That would be so embarrassing, my God. So I want to give you something else, something else to think about. It's a good thing, because I want to suggest to you that you all possess a superpower. It's a secret ingredient that is essential to every solution that you or anybody else is going to create. And it's the solution to every problem that we currently face, or it's part of the solution to every problem we currently face. Every problem we face as a community, as a city, a state, a nation. That, that ingredient, and Vice Dean Leeds made reference to it, that ingredient is optimism. You got here today through hard work, yes, through study, through discipline. For some, it was a struggle over many years, starts and stops in and out of school. You had to balance obligations, but you worked through all of that. You worked through all of that because you believed in your core that it is possible to make things better. You believed that earning this degree would be empowering, would be transformative, not just in a financial sense, but also in your ability to help people, to support your own family, to serve the general public, to do good. Without that belief, in the potential of the future, in the potential of your own future, in the potential of the future of your family, your children, your friends, those who you will help, why even embark on the journey? What would be the point? Why undertake the hard work if you didn't believe the world could be made better, either in the narrow sense, your own world, or in the much broader sense, the world which we all inhabit? It had to be an optimistic belief that tomorrow could be better than today, that would drive you forward. Anger, spite, fear, resentment, none of these emotions, powerful though they may be, none of them, would have been sufficient to get you over the obstacles that you invariably encountered along the way. Only an optimistic belief, only an optimistic belief that your hard work could get you here, only that was sufficiently motivating. And here's the thing, as I look out, we as a planet are facing a dire shortage of that optimism. In fact, that in itself may be our biggest problem. Because quite frankly, if you don't believe things can get better, that challenges can be overcome, it is very hard to justify sacrifice, negotiation, or cooperation. Without optimism, the right thing to do is just grab what you can and hope you do better than the next guy. In many ways, this lack of optimism is totally puzzling because the world is in several respects thriving as it never has. It doesn't feel that way, but it's true. Literacy is at an all-time high. The number of people living on this planet in poverty is at an all-time low. Violence and armed conflict have become incredibly rare in historical terms, and diseases that used to ravage millions have been conquered. And yet, and yet, I will not stand here and tell you that the erosion of optimism is irrational. There is no time, and it really isn't probably the right place, to get into all the reasons why people feel discouraged and dissatisfied. 
But let us stipulate together that we do face challenges and many around us are struggling to find the way. Life can be very hard. By the way, that's the reason to whoop and holler tonight because this is one of those nights when everything is good. Now, I recently read an article, which I hesitated to bring up tonight. You'll understand why in a moment. Um, but I do want to share it with you, and it's a little unusual. I'm taking a risk in doing this, so please bear with me and hopefully tolerate it if you think it's weird. The article said that for the first time since World War I, life expectancy in the United States had declined for two years in a row. Think about that for a second. We would expect a person born today to live less long than a person born three years ago. That's unprecedented in the modern history of our country. And it is shocking to me, just shocking. So I hope that you students are using the analytic tools to question why this is. Are diseases more virulent today than they were years ago? No. No, that's not it. Is cancer striking earlier? No. In fact, people with diseases like cancer are living longer than they used to. As is often the case, you find the answer by digging into the data a little bit. So all those quantitative and statistic classes that you hated, yeah, yeah, they're useful. They're useful. So it turns out if you look into this data, the trend, and I'm simplifying a little bit, but the trend is driven by increases in mortality in two, basic, in two basic senses. First, dramatic increases in death by overdose, including drugs and alcohol and other substances. Way up. Not just this year, but over the course of the last 10, 10, 15 years. And death by suicide continues to spike dramatically, up by a third since 1999. This is frightening stuff, and I know that it's personal for many people in this room tonight, and I want to recognize that. So many lives have been touched by these tragedies. Now, we could get into the details, the whys, the hows, the what's going on, break things into more pieces. I don't want to do that tonight. Rather, I'm struck by something more fundamental. And it takes me back to you and that superpower I talked about before. Because it seems to me, given the cause of the decline in life expectancy in our country, addiction, loss of hope, that what really drives it is a deficit of optimism, a lack of belief in the potential for tomorrow. And it is a challenge to each and every one of us. Hopelessness and lack of optimism has stopped everyone of us, every single one of us from moving forward at one time or another. And let me be clear, I'm not just talking about a lack of hope for ourselves. Our willingness to give up on others is a common human failing as well. We write people off. Sometimes we have no choice, being honest, no choice after years of struggle and even threats to our own personal safety. But sometimes, given the current climate, we're willing to write off, we're willing to lose hope, optimism for whole classes of people in society with whom we do not share political beliefs. That is a profound loss of optimism. How can we make progress when we've concluded that whole segments of society are simply irredeemable and that I myself, I myself have no future, no prospects for a better tomorrow? So I was thinking about all of this. Um, after reading this article, I was thinking about all this when I attended a fundraising breakfast this morning for an organization called the Human Services Campus. Now, the Human Services Campus is an organization with which Watts College collaborates on a regular basis. Uh, probably some of you have been there in the internship or in service, and many of our faculty members work there. I happen to be a member of the board, which is why I was at the, why I was at the breakfast. The campus is a unique nonprofit entity uh, it created between a, par a partnership of government and non-government. Now it's completely non-governmental. It involves 20 organizations 
all committed to serving the needs of people experiencing homelessness. At the Human Service Campus, the Human Service Campus, which is literally, it's less than a 10 minute walk from here. If you, if you go that way towards 12th and Madison, you'll get there and you'll see a place surrounded by people experiencing homelessness, waiting to get in where they, to the campus where they can find shelter, they can find medical care, dental care, counseling, job training, and placement housing assistance. It is a remarkable place which the director of the agency said this morning fills you both with a sense of despair but also a sense of wonder at people turning their lives around. Uh, and people who are at their lowest point in their life can go there and find compassion, care, respect, and I would say most importantly, optimism. George W. Bush, who I mentioned, uh, sorry, George H. W. Bush, who I mentioned passed away recently, was mocked many decades ago for talking about a thousand points of light. People remember that? I think that was wrong to mock that. Human Services Campus is most definitely a point of light. It's a point of light, and I've realized that in the following way, because you might have the same view that I view, which is, how is it possible? How is it possible for somebody who has lost everything, somebody who is living on the streets, oftentimes in and out of correctional institutions, battling addiction and mental illness, how on earth is it possible for them to recover a sense of optimism? And the short answer, really, is I don't know. Because I don't. I don't know. But I know it is possible because I've seen it. I've met these individuals and been inspired by them. Now I know part of it is the incredible staff and volunteers at the campus and its agencies, many of whom are our graduates and students. They look at clients and they see past dirtiness. They see past exhaustion. They see past fear to see each, each individual as he or she can be. That is not always easy. But these dedicated people, many of them social workers, by the way, these dedicated people retain optimism for the client, even when the client does not. And here is what I know because of this. I know it is possible, I know it is possible to reignite that light of optimism, to reignite that flame of hope. I know because it has been my privilege to meet numerous people who have some, somehow, somehow found their way out of the darkest of darknesses. With the help of counselors and coaches, sometimes family or friend or congregation, but sometimes on their own. Somehow they have rediscovered optimism and made the hard journey to realize their potential. When you meet folks at this low point, it can be truly hard to believe and hard to remember what is possible. That is why we have to be reminded, like I was by the testimony given this morning at that breakfast, we need to remember. We need to remember for ourselves and for others that optimism is possible, that we can regain it, and that with it, Anything is possible. Now, just a few, just a few hours ago, <clears throat> I had the pleasure of meeting many of our online graduates who we recognized earlier, who have traveled great distances, so we, graduates, family, fa faculty, staff, so that we can celebrate together. I think it's worth the trip, so I'm glad you're here. Well, one graduate, one graduate came up to me to tell me how much ASU meant to him. He was pretty easy to spot because I don't think he was wearing any clothing that was not maroon and gold and said ASU or Sun Devils all over his entire body. It was pretty awesome. Um, but his appreciation for the opportunity and his accomplishment was deep. Kyle Dunson. Kyle, where are you? Please stand up. Kyle has shared this story with others, so I'm confident he's okay with what I'm doing. 
You're not disagreeing now, Kyle. But Kyle explained that he has, in his life, experienced homelessness for well over a decade, that he was in and out of jail scores of times, that he destroyed relationships with his family through it all, and had reached severe, severe low points through his life. And somehow, somehow, he regained his own optimism. He regained his own hope. He slowly rebuilt his life. He repaired, he repaired some of those frayed relationships, built new ones, eventually finding the strength to go back to school, earn a college degree, and now tonight he's here to receive his Masters of Social Work. Congratulations, Kyle. Now that is, that is a powerful story. You're allowed to sit now. <laughs> that is a powerful story. It's powerful on an individual basis. I'm honored to be here with Kyle, and I know many of you have had, have had difficult, difficult paths that have gotten here tonight. But it's also a story that reminds us to craft our institutions and policies in such a way that optimism is maintained and fed. Like Kyle, so many of you didn't travel a straight line to get here. We have built ASU as an institution that prizes inclusion over exclusion precisely for this reason. But individual stories like Kyle's and others, are reminders that one of the most important things we can do, one of the most important things you can do as graduates, is to help maintain our own belief in the capacity of each one of us and all of us together to make tomorrow better than today. As society, we're losing grip on that belief. We see it in countless ways every day. And alas, this move movement in the wrong direction can quickly become a downward spiral if left unchecked. If optimism is extinguished, the vacuum is filled by despair, fatalism, and resignation. And any one of the former clients and staff at the Human Services Campus, those who have worked their way up from the depths of despair can tell you that these things are the enemies of recovery and restoration. But you graduates, you already know that or you wouldn't be here tonight. So I have, I have a secret to share with you. I, I maintain my own optimism in the face of things that disturb me because of you. That is, the, that is the truth. Because of your energy, because of your passion, because of your commitment. So you have to keep using your superpower to maintain and feed the optimism that drives human progress, combined with your ideas, your creativity, your intelligence, the skills you have acquired here in the Watts College of Public Service and Community Solutions, you will indeed be the solution. Congratulations to you all.